Everywhere I look, it just seems like one person after the other is quitting reselling. Hello and welcome and thank you to all those new subscribers we have off the back of our video that we did last week, um, Tice Tice Baby. It was a reaction video regarding if thrift stores and op shops and charity stores, depending where you are and what you call them, are actually driving out reselling and resellers in that capacity. Uh, so we did have some fantastic feedback from that and thank you very much for those left comments. I do have a little bit of a job for you in a second and I will get to that. Um, I want you to do something for me and be fantastic if you can. Um, I did take your feedback on, on board. Um, I won't be whispering and subconsciously trying to get into your head to subscribe. So if you are into the reselling niche, you're into, I suppose, community niches in the sense that you, you're somewhat lonely and you want to you know, have some people to talk to, um, or also if you're into uh, an incompetent 40-something-year-old man tripping over words and losing his voice uh, periodically through the video, please subscribe. That's probably one or maybe two times that I'll say it throughout the whole video. So I do appreciate those that have popped on in the last week um, and I do appreciate those ones that pop on today. So a little bit about myself. I'm Minion J. I work for the Disgruntled Octopus. Um, so I may have already pre mentioned previously, he's on the podcast channel. Um, I'm over here. He lets me control the, the, the strings from this perspective per se. Um, and we're looking at a reaction video today regarding is reselling over and this kind of you know ties into uh the video that we did last week from tice tice baby uh, i also spoke a little bit about on our friday night live if you are in australia we do a live uh, around 8 p.m australian eastern standard time if you're in the states or if you're in the uk you'll have to work out where it is from that perspective but the purpose of those uh those lives uh even though it went for two hours on friday and i lost my voice and just got it back a couple of days later um once that live finishes, that video ceases to exist. We are interested in that. Um, we have a lot of good community involvement, even though I hate saying that word, in the sense that people will divulge stuff because they are in that closed ecosystem. Uh, it's completely free. I don't charge mem memberships. All I do say is that if you do enjoy the contacts, uh, you know what to do. What I want you to do in the comment section below, press pause after I finish talking, not now, is actually go in there and put where you're actually from. So what I want you to do is put your community down. So if you're basically from me, I grew up in uh, Maitland in New South Wales, which is about three hours north of uh, Sydney. Um, just to put in Maitland. And if you want, you can more inclined to uh, put in a fun fact about Maitland or fun fact of where you're actually coming from. And what I want the other people to do after you put your, your, your where you're actually from, so don't put your, <laughs> your street address, but put the suburb or the city you're from and go through the other comments and actually work out if you've actually visited that place. So, for example, you know, if you had been to Maitland before, um, you could put it in the comment section. Back in 2006, I drove through Maitland and I found it was nice. So something along that. So I want to kind of build some community engagement in this video as well, because what I find as previous as a re full-time reseller, and I apologize for rambling and I will get over it in a second, is that it was quite lonely. Um, especially for those reselling elements. Uh, my wife didn't care about reselling. <laughs> my kids don't care about reselling. Um, and I used to harass Grumpy Granny and a couple of the other YouTubers that I speak to on a regular basis. So what I want to try and do is kind of build that element where people um, become known to each other independent of the YouTuber or, you know, from me, from that perspective. I will keep tabs on it and I will respond to comments like I always do. Um, however, I want you to kind of build your own semi-community in the comment section below and actually start engaging with people so you can recognize names because I do see the same names pop up on different YouTube channels. Um, and then there's new ones as well that I don't see. And I'll, so let's start that. Put down the comment section below uh, where you're from. And, you know, obviously a fun fact about that, if you want that, that way inclined. And likewise, if you have been there before, just say, hey, look, I've been there before or I visited there or went holidays or something along to that. But anyway, uh, enough of me rambling. Let's get to the video. Look, it just seems like one person after the other is quitting reselling. So this is Karina. Um, I will link her video in the comment section below. I did have a <laughs> um, to what it was. Uh, so basically, I did have someone put a, a troll comment that was picked up by YouTube. I don't think they realised that I'm in the military, and what they what they said in the video is quite light on to what we actually hear on a daily basis. Um, so you're probably going to try a little bit harder to you know to offend me or to upset me from that perspective, but. I will put her uh, video, original video in the description, but the troll comment more related to the fact that as I talk too much and they wanted to watch the video and not have me interject every two seconds. It's a reaction video. This is the purpose of reaction videos. I'm not too sure if you're what you're, what you're watching. Do you want to just sit here and just like stare at the screen and not react? Because 
like I've said before, I've been reselling full time since 2021, um, quite heavily since 2014. So there is a lot of tidbits of information that I can throw in from my perspective. I'm not egotistical in the sense that's the octopus um, that I know everything. And by all means, challenge something in the comments if you if you need to. If you know if you don't agree with me or you have a different stance of thinking about things. But the reason why I picked this video out for is because a it complements the one we did last week from Tice Tice Baby. She makes some very 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 valid points, and she is incredibly smart for a person her age. Um, I'm you know like very early forties. And I wish I had that mindset at, I to say she's mid to late 20s. So hopefully I haven't offended her further. Hey, might as well keep digging the hole where I'm going. Well, my name is Karina. I am a full-time reseller. I don't even identify that as that anymore, but for the sake of this video, I am a full-time reseller. I also own a brick and mortar consignment store. I've been reselling on and off in different capacities since 2012. I took the leap into full-time in 2019, and last year I opened my brick and mortar consignment store, Five Consignment. A lot of YouTubers that talk about consignment don't really talk about the piece where yeah, they normally just say, hey, I sell it on behalf of someone else, but they don't tell you about the back end of, you know, obviously taxes and postage and the breakdown of costs and all these different things and how, what is the lead time before you actually pay that person? And personally, like I said, 30 days from when, the, when that buyer receives it. We kind of have a good scope on the community, on the trends, on what's happening. And what I've been noticing lately is a lot of sellers, even like the bigger influencer type resellers, either stepping away from reselling completely or really downsizing and kind of readjusting their businesses. Some so this kind of piggybacks on what we spoke about last week, right? So for me personally, a grumpy granny and I have said this in the podcast that, <clears throat> excuse me, we're actually, you know, with our content, we're not making it purely reselling stuff, right? So we actually are edging out slowly to encompass more of a community uh, that has something in common opposed to just purely reselling. Um, like I said earlier with the, the Friday Night Lives, I'll talk about bolos, I'll talk about all those different things. And if you haven't watched the, the thrift video from last week, the uh, the Goodwill video that Tice Tice Baby did, um, A, check out his video and check out mine because I've got a strong hunch that, you know, thrift stores like Goodwill and Salvos and Vinnies or wherever you have overseas um, – are actually watching you know this content and, and someone put in the comment section from the last week's video is that they believe that youtubers are destroying reseller and i agree with that i'm not disputing that at a time and in any sort of capacity right but i will put on there saying that thrift stores or charity shops or op shops are becoming more and more savvy they they are employing a lot more younger people when you used to go into charity shops when i was a kid uh, or even up to the space of probably five years ago was that they were primarily ran by, you know, elderly ladies. And that's not having a go at anyone in particular, uh, grumpy granny aside. But now when I walk in there, th there's people like Karina. They're like late 20s or early 30s and also all the, you know, kids that are, you know, getting some work experience before they can, you know, apply for their first job. So these people actually know how to use phones. They know how to use the internet and actually look up how to how to price these things. So not only are YouTubers providing, you know, very succinct data sets in a 15 or 20 minute video going, hey, look, you need to look out for monster high dolls. You need to look out for this. You need to look out for that. Um, these people that, you know, are volunteering um, also know what to look for. So yes, I agree that resellers are destroying, you know, the reselling market per se. And I can tell you right now, YouTube does not pay anything. So for that Goodwill video that I launched last week, 100 views, which is a fantastic, and thank you for all those that watched, it paid me $11 Australian. So if I'm here destroying markets or destroying reselling content, easy sellout because, yeah, for <laughs> for two hours of work um, to get paid $11, it's not really working. So, But for me, I, I just quite enjoy talking to people, interacting with people, and like I said, that you know, I, I don't want to destroy someone's market, so I'm not going to make it widely available what bolos and all these different th things to look out for outside those lives on a Friday night. And I, I'm not trying to push that. Yeah, that's not the new subscribe um, thing. It's basically, like I'm saying, is that I don't want it to be accessible to Goodwill and Salvo stores and all those different things um, because, yeah, like, like I said, they're getting that content for free and obviously edging out resellers. Still reselling, but they are exploring other avenues of income or just... I agree with this, and I think it was very, 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 very early on in the podcast that Grumpy Granny and the Octopus were doing it where it was said is that what you want to do is basically, and I, and I said this last week in the video as well, is that 
get in and get out. You know, basically don't buy long tail items that, you know, will take six or seven years to sell. Go to the thrift store, you know, find something they've tripped up on. Like, you know, for example, you know, Grumpy Granny here, uh, over here, $3.00. It could potentially go into $75 because it is a, a brand name kind of thing and make your money get out. Um, so don't hold into things for long term because I think we are getting very rocky from a reselling perspective. I think people, especially with the, the economic climate, the cost of living crisis, all these different things, they're watching YouTubers, they're watching you know self-proclaimed gurus, all these different things um, that are selling them a product either through you know free YouTube content, um, making my measly eleven dollars for a thousand views or where they're charging you know thirty five dollars a month for reselling content that either to pay off debt like i said last week or create different business adventures for example um personally i i just do it for for fun <laughs> i'm a bit of a sadist in that respect don't get into that cyclic mindset that you sell something on ebay then you make a hundred dollars profit then you have to get to the thrift store and spend that hundred dollars onto different things because you will find that your garage or your house or storage sheds will turn into a hoarder's house because potentially, especially very new into the reselling space, you'll buy anything and it won't sell. So you're gonna have a lot of garbage that you need to clean out on a regular basis, where if you, you know, that $100 profit, you spent $25 on new stock and $50 on reinvesting it um, into, you know, to another business venture and $25 for taxes. Go that way, you can't go wrong. And these are my numbers to be quite frank with you, over the last year. They are not great. This I think it's fantastic that people like this are displaying their, their eBay numbers. All right, so those are interested. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So this is this is Flipwise. This is what I use to do these different things. And more, quite quickly, one up for transparency because she's showing you her figures. Uh, for in the last week, um, I've sold $2,300 Australian and $1,500 profit after fees, postage, um, cost of goods, eBay, all those different things. So that's primarily, I'm just showing you from my perspective, just to give some legitimacy behind that I, I am reselling on eBay. Um, I've been quite slack. Uh, off the back of last week's video as well, is that it'll actually tell you where you source these items from, right? So my my biggest sourcing element by far was Salvation Army, which is Salvos, it's a thrift store over here, and Facebook Marketplace. If resellers are being edged out of thrift stores and op shops and all these different things, uh, I'm in a world of hurt considering that like <laughs> a vast majority of my products last week came from a charity shop or came from a thrift store. So be very, very mindful uh, where you're actually getting your stuff from. Um, and if you are becoming a reseller, that $1,500 I need to take out tax um, and reinvest into different things. But like I said, that I've been selling for the best part pretty pretty heavily for for 10 years now um and i'm only making 1500 dollars a week and putting a lot of hours in for all intensive purposes and like i said if you watch the podcast um the the octopus has disclosed his numbers for the last week so then maybe that's a bit of a shout out to slide across that channel i'll put it in the description field um a lot of youtubers don't and the, and the reason why the octopus hasn't previously is because um you know if, with i'm not saying that she's fudging her numbers but i really don't have anything to validate that that numbers are correct so i'm actually using flipwise um i do have some thoughts on it which i'll release in a future video i think it's really good for the, for the most part um and but like i say from a from a what sold perspective which is on the podcast channel um it's it's data that i can't manipulate to a degree very very impressed with people that are quite forthcoming with their numbers and just be mindful of the fact is that if i say i made well i sold ten thousand dollars in a week i may have only made thirteen dollars 26 profit what sold and what actually is the profit margins two different things be very mindful of that it's been the worst reselling year that i've had in my existence as yes <laughs> i can't agree enough oh my god yes but also in the last 12 months, ever, you might hear April 23 being thrown around on some YouTube channels. eBay died for a lot of people. They must have changed something in the algorithm. Uh, you go to Facebook groups, you go to Reddit posts and all these different things. You can always track it back to April 23 where eBay just really didn't become eBay anymore from a from a sales perspective. A resale slave. I just think it's really interesting. Like I have been noticing a definite like redirection away from the typical reselling path that i've had over the last decade we'll identify ourselves as resellers full-time resellers um 
that basically say, hey, look, I, the reason why I resell full time on eBay is to break the nine to five. I don't want to be owned. I don't want to work for myself and all these different things. You don't. I can tell you right now, you are living in a fantasy world, or if you're that way inclined, you will be living in a fantasy world. Um, come at me. Let me know in the comment section below if I'm wrong. But I, I, I don't think I'm wrong about this one. I'm really staunch in the fact that this that as a YouTuber, there's a lot of YouTubers out there that romanticize about reselling, how fantastic it is. You know, they do reseller meetups. They do, you know, sunswept uh, photographic uh, videos and all these different things and make it all all fun and all these different things. It's not. It's a slog. You pretty much lose your weekend. Personally, I, I would love to do YouTube regardless because it, it's easy. I can interact with people. Uh, I can talk to people offline, people email, people Instagram, all these different things. I quite enjoy that. Uh, reselling, I quite enjoy. Uh, however, I'm primarily using it to fund other endeavors. Like, yeah, if I'm looking at branching off um, to other things, or I'm looking to pay for family holidays or pe family education or something along the lines of that, uh, use it from that perspective. But please, by all means, if you want to take it from me and you don't know me from a bar of soap, I understand that and I appreciate that. But take it from someone that has sold re full time for two years. It's not. It's not worth it. Home. What I'm seeing online is almost kind of like the downfall of the reseller community, which is mm. so crazy because. And I agree. And yeah, if you are that person that put that comment in there saying I interrupted all the video all the time and you know put my voice in it, and I'm not very good at it, which is fine. I, I'm not very good at this thing. This is why I'm doing these things for because I could actually improve doing it. So let me know in the comment section below. What I can do to improve, yeah, probably not drinking Pepsi, probably um, having a better light source and something behind me. Um, so quite quickly, a little bit of a divergence because, hey, why not? I've got problems. <laughs> You'll work out that pretty quick. Um, I'm actually going to start filming in my, I suppose, my eldest's bedroom just because she's got a lot of uh, anime plush and she's got a lot of different things from that perspective. So it'll be a lot more... Uh, interesting background uh she she's like i said before she's quite into anime she's quite into you know karomi and you know all those kind of things so well at the very least we'll have some plushes in the background to uh to film on and uh yeah and like i said that it's it's just it's further away in the back of the house so i can talk i can flail my arms around and sound like an idiot as much as you want uh, and i'm not expecting anyone else in the house to keep quiet and you know keep out of my hair <laughs> so you don't have that background noise kind of going on from that perspective but from what you're saying is, yes, it, like from a YouTube reselling perspective, if you look at the podcast videos from 12 months ago that were on this channel, uh, when we first started, they were getting six or 700 views, which is phenomenal for a very, very, very new channel with probably 30 subscribers back at that stage. We had a lot of bigger community following. Um, we've moved that to a new channel, which I've mentioned 960,000 times before. The viewership is like inkling you along. If you go to the bigger reselling YouTube channels, um, like your Commonwealth Picker, your ADH Dave, uh, Harry Tornado, all those different ones, look at the statistics from 12 months ago. Go to a video 12 months ago or even two years ago, depending on the, 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 the existence of their channel. They had like thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of views and something that I can only hope to aspire to one day. But I don't think anyone could put up with me for that long. Um, <clears throat> go back to their recent video and they are probably maybe 25% of those those numbers. So she is right in the sense that the community is moving away or fracturing or it could be a case that there's new resellers coming onto the space which are more relevant. And like I said previously, I prefer to watch the resellers that are quite small in channel numbers in the sense that yeah, their subscriptions are probably under two, 3,000. Uh, I find them more relatable. They're more genuine. They're more... They're not putting up content for the sake of content to get paid or memberships or subscriptions and all these different things. Oh, sorry, um, sponsors and all those different things. The community is fractured. And like I was saying before, it is quite lonely being a reseller in any capacity. Um, so by all means, please, 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 please reach out. Um, I'm quite big on mental health. I mentioned before, I am military. I have lost some friends to, you know, um, circumstances you could probably imagine. So what I want to try and do is obviously provide you know, the community as such, I hate that word. Um, it sounds so <laughs> cultish, but I want somewhere people can come here and they can talk to each other um, and engage in, in in chat. Like, you know, they can bounce off all these different things without having to, you know, get messed up in politics or having to, you know, join discords and all these different things. Um, 
and and like I said, that you know, if you are struggling, reach out to support services. My my description's got all the ones, the major ones from the major countries. Everyone was, you know, their biggest goals was to go full time, to work from home, to open a warehouse, or to do all of these things. People were just going big, going ham on their reselling visions, and now it's like almost the complete opposite. But she's right. Like there was almost like a. A career, a career progression that was laid out for people watching these YouTube shorts, right? So they might watch their favorite reseller and then, you know, hey, I'm running out of my, my garage or running out of um, a spare room. Then all of a sudden next week will be, hey, I've purposely built a, a, a building at the backyard that will hold my eBay stock. Then they basically, they've run out of that. Then then they'll move into a storage shed. Then all of a sudden they'll move into a warehouse and they'll move on with all these different things. And a lot of people become ingrained or a lot of people fall into the mentality is that because their favorite reseller or their favorite YouTuber does this progression in their in their reselling career or their reselling style, uh, they have to follow that as well. And I, I found a lot of people that I speak to in the reselling space, they've gone into you know, massive warehouses or they've gone into like massive storage sheds and it, it, it suits them by all means, I'm not having a go at them, but realistically that doesn't necessarily translate across to people that are only making, wanting to make a couple hundred dollars a week or make a couple of extra dollars a week to make men, ends meet. So you really, really, really need to separate what you want out of reselling and what you what the what the person actually selling you the product is. Personally, I, I, I have a storage shed up in Newcastle um, that primarily deals with my Lego because it's a separate place that's ran by my parents. Um, and also here, I, I just run out of the garage and I'm trying to, and I've said it thousands of times, I'm trying to get less than a thousand listings. I've got a lot of junk in my store. I need to move things into variation listings. So idealistically for me, um, my perfect size store would be 500 listings. I can manage it in the garage. Um, very, very small things like books, as much as I hate selling books, video games, I love collectibles. I love clothing. I loathe. <laughs> Whatever, whatever resonates with you, whatever you enjoy and whatever you can source, that's probably the best advice. If I was to start again, um, I would primarily resell stuff that I find interesting or can readily find it that I find interesting, like video games. Um, not so much DVDs, not so much clothes, because if you don't enjoy what you sell, you're not going to continue. Um, you're just going to end up on Facebook Marketplace or Facebook group saying, hey, look, I... I'm a failed reseller. I'm a failed easy day reseller. Um, come around and liquidate my stock for me. I've been seeing a lot of people downsizing, pivoting, leaning more on other streams of income, whether it is social media or they have another full-time job. I've seen a lot of full-time resellers have to get another job, whether it's part-time or full-time, in order to survive. If you are considering full-time employment, I'm oh, sorry, full-time reselling, and I have seen this in our lives. You know, we're Grumpy Granny and I were running lives. Uh, I've seen it in other people's lives saying, hey, look, yeah, my name's Minion J, and I'm actually going to go full-time in April 24 or something like that. This is actually for dating things, which is insane. Like, if you lose your job or you do all these different things, by all means, um, take a very, 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 very small amount of money, go to the op shop, go to the thrift store, and try and find things to flip until you can actually find another job. Don't fall onto resale. It's a lot of stress, especially if you're focusing mainly on like making sales online. There is so much stress and just like pressure to be successful. That kind of stress can lead to a lot of mental anguish, a lot of anxiety, a lot of like self-doubt as well. This is also another topic for another day, but in a way, reselling kind of ruined my life. Like, and this is and I agree with that. So basically uh, what she makes reference, reference to there is that when I was reselling full time, um, I did fall into the trap that I needed to go out almost daily, uh, I needed to list daily. My family time or my face-to-face -face contact with my family was quite strained in the sense of um, I need to do this. I need to I need to procure more items to sell more items because people were in the in the mentality that you need to list daily. You need to list X amount of day items a day onto eBay to get sales to get things. And, you know, it was a, it was a very cyclic sense. And they're saying that you know romanticizing uh, you know moving away from a boss and yeah you know, from the nine to five. I was working eighteen hours a day for probably a quarter of what I was actually being paid on the outside. So just be very mindful of that. It does have a stress. It does have that. There's no real guaranteed income with these different things, right? Even from a YouTube perspective, if you are looking from that way or you're looking from an eBay perspective or a print on demand, all those different things you're going to be looking at. Um, it's quite, there's no guarantee 
salary. Like, yeah, if you need, if you are supporting a family, and like she said, her fiance is, you know, supporting to an element. Um, my wife, my wife was working full time at the time. Well, she's still working full time, but we were primarily living on her her wage because uh, my business, I wasn't paying myself. Just cyclic, cyclic, putting it through the business, and we're living on one wage, which is fantastic. When I went back to work, because we're saving astronomically, uh, primarily from a stress perspective and from a marital point of view, it was quite a strain. Um, you know, like there was lots of fights from a financial perspective. Um, and all these different things you need to take into consideration that don't get mentioned very often. So please, 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 please do not go full time. Um, do a part time. It's fantastic. You know, do an, a side gig. Right. I don't think that this is necessarily applicable to everybody. Maybe it does relate to you. And if so, like, girl, I'm right there with you. But just being part of the reseller community, comparing myself to other businesses, to other people on social media really, really, really hurt me. And I believe that that is one of the reasons why a lot of people are stepping away. Actually, after. I agree a thousand percent. Um, this is primarily one of the reasons why I did go down the path of putting mental health um, services into my description on my YouTube video, talking a little bit from that perspective. Because you do, as a reseller, um, you watch YouTube content, and like I just showed you on Flipwise then, is that you, you watch people go, oh my God, I sold $15,000 this week on eBay. They don't tell you what their figures are. They don't tell you what their profit margins are. They don't tell you what the cost of goods are. A lot of them are talking about everyone. Um, However, it does it doesn't mentally affect you. It does because you think, oh my god, that I'm here full time reselling. I'm only selling you know two and a half thousand dollars a week, uh, making a profit of you know, fourteen hundred dollars or whatever it was. And you know, like how can I how can I maintain my family? How can I do all these different things? I'm constantly working eighteen hours a day, uh, and your stress, your anxiety goes through the roof. You start second guessing yourself. There's a lot of things from this perspective. And until you firsthand, it is quite lonely. It's quite uh, anxious and all these different things, especially if you don't know what you're doing. And I knew what I was doing. I knew my niche is back to front. And I've, I've said that numerous times. There's always something else to learn. Uh, but the primarily things that I sell, I'm, I'm probably the best person in the reselling space to, to talk on certain niches. Um, but just by virtue of the reselling um, research that I've done, the product knowledge that I have. Um, but like even from that perspective, it's, it's quite lonely and quite um, daunting. Seeing some people's posts and seeing how other people are reflecting on how the business has taken a toll on their mental health, I feel like there are a lot of people who would agree with me. On top of that, we have inflation, we have just how the economy is going, and I do know that it is a big reason why we are seeing a struggle in our sales, why we are seeing a decrease in our sales. However, because I don't think I'm the right person to speak on that at this moment, I'm not going to but so primarily i'm not going to talk about it either uh however i am finding um that is coming into play from my perspective what I can speak on, however, is that I've also noticed post-COVID, and I know we're a few years out of it already, but post-COVID, people are preferring to shop in-store versus online. At least where I live, I've been noticing they're just people just want to go out. They want to touch the clothes, they want to try on clothes. Buying online just ha doesn't have the same appeal. On top of that, there have been such an influx, a rise of vintage shops, secondhand shops opening. So shopping secondhand in person is a lot more accessible than shopping online. Which what I think it is, is instant gratification, right? So basically there's a little dopamine hit that when you go to the shop, pay your product, you actually get your product straight in your hand, right? So that instant gratification you're getting, if you buy something on eBay, um, me personally, I ship out very quickly. I, like I said in the podcast is that I ship out as soon as it comes through in front of the computer, I'll put the label on and drop it off at the parcel locker. So it goes, a lot of people might you know, have three or four day handling time, all these different things. So you're not getting that dopamine hit. You actually press, you know, submit to buy, uh, unless it's a very rare item that you can't get anywhere else. And that's probably the niches that I would probably suggest focusing on if you if you want to go that way, that lead time for it to come. But like you're saying is that these vintage stores that are selling, you know, out of print items or they are selling stuff that's very, very rare and materializing more and more around the place. Um, so you're able to get that immediate dopamine hit. You get out of the house like you were, if you were locked down for a pretty long period of time, I just do it from that perspective. Um, so just be very mindful of having different channels of moving your stock as well. It is and should be a side hustle. It should be a supplementary income stream, not a main source, not the full-on business. Regardless, Poshmark was intended to be for funsies, like, oh, clear out things in your closet, not a full-on 
operation business and this might be you know tea this might be a controversial opinion but again it's my opinion and i think that it's going back to kind of that are people still I kind of feel the same for eBay as well because a lot of the commercials that I've seen from eBay is that, you know, if you've got stuff laying around, turn it into cash. So basically they're, what they're doing is they want sellers to go on there and, you know, sell things, one-off items that, you know, that you might have this, you, know, you, you receive from your great-grandmother and you're kind of like, I don't want this in my house. What am I going to do with it? Sell it on eBay. You know, someone else that likes grumpy granny characters, uh, they, might, they might purchase it from that perspective. I don't know if eBay was originally geared or they had morphed into that kind of system where they are trying to support, you know, full-time sellers or they're trying to sell these different things. Yes, I know that they have big box retailers on there and stuff along the lines of that, but that like like she yes, has, they're actually diversing their portfolio, right? So they've got online stores, they've got brick and mortar stores, these big box places. They're also using uh, eBay as an element of, you know, to move that stock as well. So eBay is not their primary way of pushing that out into the into the ecosystem um so basically i would suggest what she's done um you know create different methods of you know moving your stock you know through poshmark through ebay through i wouldn't recommend a brick and mortar store but hey look if that floats your boat do the research um you know brick and mortar store or you know if you've got a marketplace where you know like judd of the diary of a flipper has access to uh, put your items there and you know move them from that perspective as well but don't definitely just don't rely on one platform Still seeing success with reselling, yes. And I think that those people are incredibly smart. However, either they have a team, um, other sources of income, so there isn't a lot of pressure on having to make daily sales or anything like that, or they're able to like invest in higher quality items that g give out like bigger returns on investment, or, and this is another controversial topic, they are burning themselves out. They might be successful now, but it's not a sustainable way. Like, and I'm talking specifically about like live sales. I just don't think that live selling is sustainable long-term, especially when you're a one person show. I so she's talking about whatnot here. And I, we haven't got whatnot here in Australia. And basically Grumpy Granny tells me all the time, every time we speak, I can't wait for whatnot to get here. She's hit the nail on the head. But what she's talking about with whatnot is that you have to be on your A game all the time. You basically have to be in front of the camera. You need to be smiling, you know, products and all these different things. And it's quite time intensive, right? So what I've actually watched a couple of whatnot shows. It's very labor intensive. Yeah, you, know, you have to be in front of a camera. You can't like, you know, as much as there's no such thing as passive income. eBay is probably the closest one you can. You put an item up, you can be at the shops, you can be you know, on holiday or something like that, you hear a cha-ching and you've sold the item, right? Uh, what not to sell things, you really need to be in front of the camera showing it. Um, you can't be in the middle of the Mediterranean if that's, you know, unless you wet, your whatnot shows from there, but you really, really need to be in front of the camera. You need to be in that mindset. You need to be happy. If I'm selling things, you know, I could be crook in bed. I could be sick as a dog, uh, head in a bucket and still sell things. But if I was, you know, on whatnot trying to sell things with my head in a bucket, <laughs> which means you, you, you're sick, right? If you don't know what that means. Um, the likelihood of that being a successful show is probably going to be non-existent, right? So just be very, very mindful of that. There's other platforms, there's other means. Um, yes, it will probably generate a lot of income in a short amount of time if you need to sell things to recoup. However, there's always pros and cons of everything. I just think it's a lot of work and I've heard from people who were going that route who pivoted and changed their minds because they were just spending all their time on those live sales. Even though like you felt like you made sales really quickly in that hour or two hours that you were live, like there's still all the prep, there's still all the shipping, there's all the sourcing, having to keep all of those in, like keep that much inventory so that you can stay having those sales. It can be a lot financially, mentally, physically. Platforms, you need to be very mindful of the fact is that there's a lot of effort that goes into these all things. The things. So. so with all of this, I guess the big question is, can you still go full-time with reselling? I think you could. There's a lot of caveats to that. I think that you technically could, especially if you played your cards right and like just had a really specific, if you had a really like structured plan. And I'll, honestly, I still know people who are full-time resellers and who are doing fine. However, I think that if you are trying to decide if you should make the jump right now, I think you should hold off for a little while at least. I don't think that right now is the right time to go full-time into she is phenomenal. She's very wise, and I agree 110%. These people, and I'm not picking out anyone in particular, is that 
they kind of they don't say you shouldn't go full time reselling, but but if I went full time reselling, this is what I would do to go full time reselling. People jump on that boat, or they jump on that cult, or they jump on that reselling um, full time train because you know, they could be one of the cool kids or whatever they want, whatever's going through their head. Please, please, please listen to her. Full time reselling is extremely hard, and you know I would dare to say maybe you know out of every full time reseller, probably maybe two percent make it. So you need to look at it from that perspective. The odds are against you. You're not special. Um, you're it's purely down to chance and luck. Reselling, I think, unless you have like a very, very, very cushioned bank account to help you kind of get through the rough times. It could work, but I wouldn't get my hopes up. I've just seen too many people leaving reselling in order to say like, yes, you should definitely do that full time. And I'm going to leave the video here and she's fantastic and she's correct. And I agree 110% with what she says. By all means, please go to her channel, subscribe. If you haven't already, go check her out. She's fantastic. Uh, she's quite quite switched on she's been through the, the journey like she's been selling for at least 10 years i'm across all the hurdles that i've come from so she's from the states um but i'm from australia i know people very similar to my situation in the uk in europe uh, new zealand and all these different places so it's not just isolated to one particular area realistically to succeed if you want my 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 crux or my basically parting phrase for these things is that you need to be in a perfect situation you need to have the mindset the drive um, the sourceability, networks, all these different things. You can't just walk into a thrift store and say, hey, look, I'm Minion J. Uh, I want to buy all your Skylanders. I get told a lot of no's. Uh, I did say last week in last week's reaction videos, ways that I would suggest if you are looking for sourcing issues or you are having sourcing problems of how to potentially get rid of that. But it's everything's labor intensive, right? It's not easy unless you set up wholesale accounts, which you won't get those crazy profit margins. You might only make 10, 15% on the sale, but that may be what you need. Yeah, you know, if you have a profit, uh, if you have a wholesale account where you've got items coming to you, which in essence, you, you could be drop shipping or you could have them here and send them out from here. Um, you could do, yeah, work nine to five, go get a job that you enjoy, do something you enjoy. And just use that to supplement your income um, and go from that perspective. But anyway, that's enough for me for this week. Thank you very much for getting this far. If you have, and I apologize, I can't stop talking. Um, but it's very, very, very important, very close to my heart in regards to, you know, community building um, in respect to mental health and all those different things. I have said before that I have struggled with mental health. Uh, I was recently diagnosed with something that's in very vogue at the moment, has four letters and starts with A. Uh, I am medicated from that perspective. So if you are that way inclined, jump, send me an email, you know, ask me questions, go from that perspective, put them in the comment section below. I'm quite, quite open. Uh, I have lost friends previously, both in military and outside of military due to mental health, due to stresses and all those different things. So I just want to create somewhere that full-time people, part-time people, you, you don't even have to be a reseller if you've stumbled across this channel by accident. You know, join, you know, just put you know, comments down below. I'll talk to you. You know, by all means, send me an email if you're that way inclined. Find me on Instagram, you know, have reach out and talk from that perspective. But but like I say, that's me rambling again for another week. If you have a reaction video that you want me to react to, I, so a big, big, big thank you for those that have gone this far. Uh, let me know in the comment section what I can improve. Uh, am I too big? Am I too small on the screen? Um, do I need to wear a bag over my head? <laughs> I, nothing offends me please by all means let me know what i can improve because i'm here to act as a conduit for you yeah you know, obviously you to talk to other people and like i said if you if you can put a comment in the comment section below where you come from um and if you, you can leave it at that or you can put a fun fact about where you come from and like would we'll go through the comment section if someone else is talking about where you've been before or you you visited or even, even if you live there uh, yeah that's an opportunity you can go thrifting with someone or you can meet up with someone for coffee or you can do all those different things so you can build your own little communities within this this community so uh, and like I said, if you are struggling with mental health, I have those um, those services in my description field. So click on them and go from that way. But thank you very much. And hopefully you have a good week. And uh, Minion Jay, we'll see you next week, possibly with another video, if I haven't been fired by the octopus. But